great really dinner. Mark, special. You, you've been all over the world. You and I have talked Mark about freedom. Uh, we've, we've, we've talked about the battle uh, in the past six years between Western democracy and illiberal democracy. And Emmanuel Macron, it was, it was beautiful when he was speaking last night. He was talking about going back to Lafayette uh, and, and, and Washington and what they were fighting for and what, what values they shared and what values we share today. And he eloquently, without naming names, but he said in his country and in our country, there are illiberal forces. We, we are worried about Russia. We are worried about China. We're worried about illiberal forces, anti-democratic forces across the world. But he said, even in your country and my country, there are those. And he didn't draw the line. Let me draw the line. That worship Orban, who, who hates Western democracy and has said as much. Putin, who hates Western democracy and has said as much. And you, you have the head of the Heritage Foundation praising Orban uh, and, and, and other Republicans praising a man who says, yes, illiberalism, it sounds pretty great, doesn't it? It's a war of ideas. And what was beautiful last night is you got presidents of two countries saying, this is a battle we're in. And as I heard him talking, it was just one of those moments. And I just said, my God, we always win this war time and again. We the people, we the people, we always win in the end. So I think, you know, last night was, was remarkable, and those words really do matter. I mean, it's, it's you know, it, they do. It, 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 at, the, at the end of the day, this is our oldest ally. You know, France is our oldest ally. One of the things that's interesting is, you know, behind the scenes, even during the darkest times, there is bilateral intelligence cooperation. Mm -hmm. There's bilateral security cooperation. We've had that. France has been incredible partners, for example, in counterterrorism. But what was refreshing yesterday is this now is out and open and overt, and I think it was something that the world really wanted to see. Yeah. Oh, um, there's, there's no doubt about it. And, and, and Congresswoman... Um, talking about our relationship, even Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill is here, even at the height of, of anti-Americanism during the, the, the Iraq war, um, when the French were working against us in the United Nations and things got very tense, I would talk to people in the intel community and they'd say, the French, they're professionals. They are our friends. Let the politicians fight. These are allies we have to have in the war on terror because they're shoulder to shoulder with us. Well, I was serving in the United Kingdom at that time um, and working with the French at that time, the French military, on some, some different relationships. And yes, they've, they've always been an ally. Um, we have had our disagreements politically, but I think when you talk about the nations in the world that share our view of democracy, it, you know, there are, it's the French, it's the United Kingdom, it's our, our allies that have been with us for decades, for centuries, actually, mm -hmm. as you mentioned. And I know because, you know, I represent the heart of the American Revolution in New Jersey and Morristown. So um, these are allies that are so important to us. And I think what struck me when I went to Brussels uh, in the lead up to the war in Ukraine. It was a couple weeks before the war started, and we were going there to really kind of take the temperature of right. our alliances in the aftermath of the Trump administration, the previous administration, which had done a lot to undermine mm -hmm. those alliances. And so to go there and to make sure we were all in, um, you know, unity on this in this fight as we led up to um, the invasion of Ukraine. And, and when I went to the NATO headquarters, when I was in Brussels with the EU parliament, this sense of almost relief that right. the United States was back at the table, that the United States was once again willing to lead, because we saw in those years when the United States had taken a step back from that table, mm -hmm. no one else stepped up to lead our democracies. Right. There, right. Nobody else seemed to be able to do that. And right. so it really was um, wonderful to see last night Again, just a continued reassertment of our alliances well, with our allies. And, and with apologies, absolutely no one. I will say we are the indispensable country to yeah. step up uh, with our allies. We can't do it without our allies. And, and that's what was so great about last night. 
um, and talking to the French delegation, also understanding that Joe Biden and Emmanuel Macron were comfortable enough with each other that they went in, they had very direct, very blunt conversations, as good friends do. And, and they put it all on the line about their disagreements, and they said, okay, let's get people working on this. Right, that's like what grown-ups do. That's what right? grown-ups do. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. What, instead of Donald Trump, I'll just say his name, instead of, of, of pushing people around in, in photo ops, instead of having right. handshaking contests with Macron, <laughs> you have grown-ups sitting there saying, we have these disagreements. All right. They're We're on the united table. Um, We're now going to have our people work and we're going to come together, as, 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 as Mark said, two oldest alliances. And like a year ago, last fall, the, re the relationship with France, you know, went through, went through a, bumpy, a bumpy time after we canceled the, the submarines that they were building. Mm -hmm. And after Afghanistan, and, you know, for whatever reason, the Allies felt mm -hmm. blindsided by that, even though, like, we all knew that's what Joe Biden was going to do. But the, you know, the relationships that are built on these principles, these principles of democracy that were upheld in our country, mm -hmm. that were upheld, you know, by, that as shown by Macron being reelected, like that's what continues to yeah. bind the country together. And just to think about the beginning of last year when we saw that what was likely to happen in Ukraine and people thinking like, is the United States up to this? Can they lead after Afghanistan? Right. People aren't so sure. And can, this, can the NATO alliance hold? And then to see after the midterms we have and those two presidents standing together mm -hmm. to like reaffirm democracy, reaffirm these uh, these republic values uh, is reassuring. And then meanwhile, the Republican Congress wants to, the Republican House wants to defund Ukraine, right? Uh, like no. defund Zelensky, like they think that's the winning, they think that's the winning issue. And like the juxtaposition between that leadership you see uh, at the White House versus you know, the Republicans down here whose first thing they want to do is, in, is investigate Hunter Biden. Yeah. Like, here we go. So yeah. as you can and, see, and, Jen Paul Mary joins us. Yeah. She yes. is co-host of Showtime's The Circus. Backwards, backing into the show. The only this way to do it. And by the way, <laughs> the, the, the Republicans in the Senate, so many of them are horrified by what's happening with the Republicans in the House. The problem for Republicans is the whack jobs yeah. in the House that are going to make Kevin McCarthy's life difficult because he doesn't know how to control them. Those whack jobs are going to define the Republican Party over the next two years leading into 24. But I think that the message of the day yesterday was, you know, uh, a respect and a love for democracy, a unity that, you know, it felt like a long time coming the entire day, the, the events, um, the conversations and the partnerships that were being built in, in open, you know, for everyone, for everybody's eyes to see. There was one more moving moment from President Macron's visit uh, yesterday where he awarded medals to five American World War II veterans at the French Embassy in Washington, D.C. Um, this was actually on Wednesday, the Legion of Honor Award. The highest honor in France was given to the veterans for the role they played in liberating France during the war. Macron praised each veteran for their individual service and pinned medals on them. In a Twitter post, Macron listed the names of the five veterans and wrote, quote, you came to fight 80 years ago from the other <coughs> side of the Atlantic to ensure our shared ideals and faith in democracy would triumph. France will be eternally grateful. So, Mark, in 2004, at the height of anti-Americanism in France, I discovered a few things about France. <laughs> I'd only been there once in high school on a trip. I did not leave a, a fan of France. They <laughs> very hostile towards Americans, especially during the Reagan era. We went to Paris first before we went up to Normandy. And every Parisian we met stumbled over themselves to say, listen, listen, we love you. We love Americans. We don't like your war. We don't like your president. But we are very surprised by that because the French sort of be standoffish and reserved. But they wanted us to know we're together. Then we went up in Normandy. One of the most moving things I've ever seen had veterans, guys in there. It was this, what, 70th, 60th anniversary. Had guys in their <laughs> 90s walking. Um, uh, some of the final years of their life, you could tell, maybe in the final months of their life. And, and walking towards the cemetery. And as they were ambling towards the cemetery, uh, French, young French families came up 
and the children moved forward with flowers, handed them the flowers. I still, all these years later, it's hard to say it without tearing up. And they said, thank you. My parents have told us we're free because of you. American flags flying from every home in Normandy. It was just a beautiful, beautiful celebration of that. And, and we saw it again with, with President Macron and those heroes. So, you know, when we when we kind of look at alliances around the world, you know, there's there's some that are can be transactional and some that can be new. Um, and then there's some that are foundational. And this is a foundational relationship. Yes. And, and I look back again at my career, mostly running counterterrorism operations uh, uh, around the world. The French were incredible partners. Nobody really knows this. But behind the scenes, we work so closely with the French because of the shared values, the shared ideals. And I'll tell you, you know, there are Americans alive today because of yeah. French counterterrorism work. And so, you know, I, I think for a lot of us, it is it is something that, uh, you know, last night was something that was meaningful. Um, and of course, it goes it does go back to World War II. Reaffirming. Absolutely. Yeah. Congresswoman. For sure. Yeah. Well, I, I, there are some Americans that um, are alive because of the French, including my grandfather. When he before he passed away, uh, he was rescued by the Free French oh, wow. when he was shot down in World wow. War II. Thank so yep. to go to Normandy mm. for the 75th anniversary and to see um, the graves there and to see um, all, what, what was sort of amazing was to see all of the Jeeps, the the Jeeps that have been restored that we just left there after World War II. And it's amazing because there are hundreds of them throughout Normandy as they celebrate. And to imagine the effort that went into um, freeing the French right. um, and making sure they were able to, uh, with the resistance, to take back their country from the Germans is really shocking. Um, to, and to see the the dedication to remembering that they do war reenactments, uh, World War II reenactments, much like we do reenactments of the Revolutionary mm -hmm. War or the Civil War. Um, so that was to see the paratroopers come in and my friend Jason Crow. <laughs> had That's told, so fun. He told General Milley, he said, I would love to jump in. And General Milley said, we can make that happen. And then Jason <laughs> said to me, he goes, why did I say that? I <laughs> <was> <laughs> jumping out of airplanes. And, yeah, exactly. and, uh, but he did that that day. And it That's was really cool. amazing. That's it was amazing. amazing.